Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On today's episode, I want to talk about something, a phenomenon that I've noticed. First of all, I do want to remind you that (laughs) this is another car recorded episode of the show. My studio is still in the center of a construction zone, so I'm recording these episodes, these uh, standalone episodes in my car, but that means you're going to hear ambulances, you're going to hear jackhammers, you're going to hear planes flying overhead. My apologies, there is no other way to do these four extra weekly episodes or daily episodes per week, I should say, without doing it this way. Otherwise, I I just wouldn't be able to record them. So please note that you might hear extraneous noises and accept my apologies. (sighs) It's all, it's all very interesting. Anyway, I I did want to say that this episode is brought to you by Brain FM. It is an app that I use every day and I love it. If you'd like to try it, go to brain.fm slash innovative mindset. And if you use my little coupon code innovative mindset, you're going to get 20% off the app. And because I'm an affiliate, I'll get a little chunk of change for it. But oh, I will never recommend something I don't love and use all the time. So let's talk about this phenomenon. And the phenomenon is people who think you're ridiculous, right? So this is, (laughs) this is an interesting, it's an interesting perspective that I have because many people over my life have thought I was completely ridiculous, completely way out there and wacky. And for the most part, I am all about letting my freak flag fly. At the same time, there are times when what you are is so freaky to people that they cannot handle it. And in, in friends, that's fine. If some if if a friend of yours can't handle you flying your freak flag fl- freak flag high, I can't even say it. That's okay. That that may be someone you don't want to be friends with because I fully believe you shouldn't capitulate and change who you are or how you behave unless of course you're hurting someone. You know what I mean? Like if you're hurting someone, that's a different story. But but if you're not, if you are just being yourself and not hurting anybody, but but yeah, you're a freak like I am. There are going to be people in your life who go, you're too freaky for me. And they're not going to be happy about who you are and what you do. And as far as I'm concerned, for me, the important part of this becomes that you don't change who you are fundamentally. I'm not sure you even can. But that you don't change who you are or what you like to do because someone else is being judgmental, right? So that happens so much on social media. You put th- you put something out and people make fun of you or they, they ridicule you or something. And especially when it's something creative, if you write a poem or put up a meme or draw something or whatever, you put it out there and it's going to be judged, right? There's no, there's no getting around it. People are going to evaluate it one way or another. And to me, that evaluation can be a constructive critique or it can be a criticism or it can dip right into bullying, right? So so how do we withstand that? Well, first of all, if you put something out, prepare yourself for the fact that it's going to be judged. And the people in your life who want to give you constructive critique, unless they're professionals at doing that kind of constructive critique, remember to take it with a grain of salt, right? That's, that's how that is. You cannot necessarily, uh, either for the good or the bad, rely on anyone else to tell you whether or not what you've just done, what you've just said is good or bad. Again, if you're hurting someone or doing something like that, that's a different, I'm not talking about that, right? I'm talking about you living your life, speaking, creating, singing, drawing, dancing, whatever it is. Someone else wants to judge you for that. First of all, are they doing it? Are they dancing if you're a dancer? Are they are they out there doing their thing? If they're not, often that kind of judgment comes because they want to be doing it and are too afraid to start. And so you end up in that situation where you have to figure out for yourself whether or not you want to give them any kind of due. Do they deserve it? I don't know that they do. I really don't know that they do. Because what if they... What if they are just sad that they aren't. And in order to make themselves feel better, 
instead of praising or, or just acknowledging that you tried, they denigrate what you've done. So you have to, you have to remember that and put it into its proper perspective. But the other part of it is, is that there are times when you espouse a belief system or ideas that people find ludicrous or ridiculous. And instead of being able to keep their mouth, mouth shut, they feel like they need to, um, comment on it. Even if it's sotto voce, even if it's like under their breath, you know what? I got good hearing. So if someone decides that they're going to either on social or, uh, in person, do that backhanded sort of left-handed, I don't like saying left-handed compliment because I'm a lefty and left-handed has this negative connotation, but this backhanded compliment thing where they don't really mean it as a compliment, they're just saying stuff. If that's the case, you end up in a situation where you have to sort of withstand someone stomping all over what you said or, or what your beliefs are or your ideas. And often the ideas that someone else has brought up, if they're radical, if they're new, people will scoff, right? Inventors, innovators of all sorts, when they came out with their world-changing ideas, people weren't going, that's awesome, let's do it. Most people likely went, well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. So please remember that and bear it in mind when you espouse something that other people don't understand or that's new and radical, that's innovative, that's that's creative, that's different, right? I, I love, and I've talked about this on the show before, but I'm going to talk about it again because I think it's super important. Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is an astrophysicist, who is the, the head of the Hayden Planetarium in New York City, He's a scientist and he, uh, he, he's science above all else. Well, he said something that I think is wonderful. He was talking about what it would be like for uh, two-dimensional people, people who live in two dimensions, right? So flat, you have uh, width, width and length, but no height. And he was saying, you know, what would it be like though for those people to all of a sudden have a sphere, a three-dimensional object pass through their space? And he said what it would be is it would start as, as a dot, tiny, tiny single dot. And that dot would expand into a small circle and that circle would get bigger and bigger and bigger. And they would see this circle, 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 and it would get bigger until suddenly it started getting smaller again. And it would become smaller, 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 smaller until it became just a dot and then disappeared. And that is his description of a three-dimensional object going through two-dimensional space. It would seem like some sort of magic or miracle to those two-dimensional beings. And then he said, and here's what, and this is a kind of a quote, and here's what keeps people like me, scientists, up at night. What if some of the unexplained and right now unexplainable phenomena that we have witnessed and seen are just higher dimensional objects coming through our three-dimensional space? What if something that's a completely unexplained phenomenon is just something from the ninth dimension passing through our three-dimensional space. And when I heard him say that, I went, yes, I love that. Because so many things that are, that are unexplained so far, we end up in this, in this amazing situation where we don't have any way of figuring it out or explaining it. And a lot of people will go, oh, poo, poo, poo. And they'll poo, poo the whole thing. And the thing that you're hearing that sounds like a bunch of birds right now is <laughs> a bunch of young women walking to school. Uh, it's amazing how much they sound like birds per the sneakers movie. Anyway, so what was I saying? Oh, yes. So a lot of the ideas that you might have, if they are radical ideas, imagine that they are like a ninth dimensional object passing through our three-dimensional space. When we think of them in this way, our radical ideas, that if, especially if there's something you've never heard of before, if it's completely innovative, it might be something that's that radical, that, that's that new. Uh, chances are somebody else has done something similar, let's be honest, but let's look at it from that perspective of what if it's not? What if it is this radical idea? Well, most people are going to look at that and go, poo, 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 poo. Like I said, they're going to do that. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to go, yeah, hold on now. 
that's okay if you don't like it, if you think it's uh, ridiculous. I'm going to keep looking at this as a possibility. I don't know how to explain whatever it is, but I'm going to keep looking at it like it's a possibility. That's the important piece. I'm going to give you an example from my own life. So as a joke, my friend Janet uh, told me about the goddess Asphalta. And what is what is the goddess Asphalta? Well, asphalt is what she's based on. And Asphalta is the goddess of parking. And so if you want to park, find a parking spot, you have to say the little prayer, Hail Asphalta, full of grace, help me find a parking space. And I took that and ran with it and said, I'm going to, I'm going to double down on that. So I made up a little, a little rhyme for this. It's hail asphalta full of grace. Help me find a parking space. Let it be the one I choose. Let it be the one I use. And the reason I added those last two lines is a, a parking spot that you see if you're stuck at a red light and it's on the street ahead of you is no good to you if someone else comes and grabs that parking spot <laughs> before you, before you get there. Right. So that's something to think about. It's like, oh, it's not just hail asphalt full of grace. Help me find a parking space. It has to be uh, something a little bit more, a little bit deeper. So not only is, should you see a parking space, but you should also get to get to use the one that you see and the one that you choose. And to, to, to triple down on it, I decided to make up a little uh, a little song for it. So here's how it goes. It goes. Hail as fault of full of grace. Help me find a parking space. Let it be the one I choose. Let it be the one I use. And so now, living in New York City and parking spaces being what they are in New York City, I sing that little song before I have to look for a parking spot when I'm driving back to near where I live. And let me just tell you, every time I sing the little song, I find a parking spot right near my apartment. It's amazing. And so we had guests this past weekend and we were going into Bushwick, which is notoriously difficult to find parking spots for. And we were visiting uh, my husband's cousin and her wife. And when we we're driving over towards there. I sang my little song, Sotto Voce. I sang it kind of because I know that, that our guests are very not into any religion, but that's not the point. Uh, the point is that I sang it and we found a parking spot literally two car lengths away from their apartment on a Saturday night, which is unheard of in Bushwick. And I sang the little song, we got the parking spot, we went up and I told them that we got a parking spot literally two car, two, two houses away from their place. And they were both shocked. And it is shocking. If you knew how hard it is to find a parking spot in Bushwick on a Saturday night, you would understand exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah, interesting, but true. And, uh, our friends, one of them anyway, was scoffing. Oh, that's ridiculous. And I'm not, is, is it true? I'm not saying I'm play, praying to the goddess as Falta. I'm saying it's a fun thing to do. And lo and behold, it seems to work. I don't know what the exact explanation is or if there's a causation. It doesn't really matter. What matters is it's something I do and it's something that seems to work. So uh, when we were leaving Saturday night, there was a woman who was parked in front of a, uh, sitting there parked in front of a hot fire hydrant on the same street. And she said, are you leaving? And we said, yes. And she said, oh, that's so lucky for me. And, and, and I said, yeah, because you have, it's tough to find a parking spot. She's like, it's impossible in Bushwick to find a parking spot. I can't believe you're leaving. So there you go. So on our way back, I didn't sing the little song just to test. I said, you know what? Because they were scoffing at me just to test. I'm not going to sing the little song. And we drove around for like a half an hour trying to find a parking spot. And the wife of the friend who, who was visiting said, you know, Zelda, maybe you should sing the Little Asphalta song. And he said, oh, just ridiculous. And I said, no, no, it's okay. I don't have to sing it. And I didn't. And boy, did we drive around for a long time looking for a parking spot. And I do have to wonder what would have happened if I had sung it. Would we have found a parking spot immediately? 
I don't know. And it doesn't even matter. It's something I do for fun. I don't know if it works because I sing. It doesn't matter to me if it works because I sing. Is it a ninth dimensional object passing through three dimensional space when I put a song out into the universe that asks for a parking spot near where I'm going? Maybe, maybe not. Who the heck knows? It's something I do. And, and frankly, It bummed me out that my friend scoffed at something I do. It doesn't hurt him at all. And that's the thing that I have to wonder about. And I realize I'm processing this as I as I do this episode, but it is something to think about for all of us. If you scoff at something someone else is doing that isn't hurting anyone or anything, right? If it's something they're doing, what do you think the effect of your scoffing is? Right? If someone scoffs at what you're doing, I'm sure it feels bad. But if you're the one doing the scoffing, What do you think you've done besides put a damper on the other person's enthusiasm, especially if it's not hurting you or anyone else? You find it objectionable that someone else does a fun little song to the goddess's falta. Why would you scoff at it? Why would you do it openly? What does it gain you from having done that? Do you need to evangelize your atheism, for example? I have a feeling he does. I don't know. I haven't talked to him about it because it just happened and it's something I've been processing, but it's an important thing for us to think about. When we're talking about compassion, we need to talk about our reactions to other people's actions, our responses to other people's actions, and maybe asking ourselves the question, what am I going to gain if I scoff at this, if I make fun of it? What will I gain? What am I doing by making fun of someone else's creative output or ideas or anything else? What have I gained? And more importantly, what have I contributed to the conversation? Because if all you're doing is scoffing, all you're doing is making someone else upset. Are you making yourself feel better? I don't know. I would, I would say no. So bear that in mind if you're the scoffer, but also bear it in mind if you're the person who someone else is scoffing at. Because if you can look at it from that perspective of they don't they haven't thought about what they're doing or why. They're just scoffing. They have counter ideas and don't have a way of saying it that doesn't sound judgmental and scornful. So what are they actually gaining when they do that? It's something for all of us to think about, I think. So Responding in kindness is probably the way to go. Thinking about it compassionately or empathetically is probably the way to go. And maybe even just asking yourself the question before you say something in response to something else someone has done or said. And the question could be, how will this affect the person? Or what am I really contributing if I say this scoffing or scornful thing? What am I really contributing to the conversation? That's something we can all think about, and that's something we can all do something about. Now, I'm not trying to censor anybody, by the way. I'm not trying to go, you shouldn't do X, or you shouldn't say Y. I'm saying, think about it. Think about what it is you're doing, and whether or not what you're doing is something that's going to be a net plus, a net benefit to the people and situation around you. All right. I hope you've enjoyed today's Compassion Wednesday episode. This is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Innovative Mindset Podcast, reminding you that this episode was brought to you by Brain FM, and you can always try a free trial if you use my little Innovative Mindset coupon. It's uh, it, The link's in the show notes. You can just go ahead and grab it. Until next time, I remind you that to innovate, you need to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. <music>Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2021. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you.